Story Corner. I'm Kristen, a camp director with Camp Galileo Anywhere, and I want to introduce my co-host, Feathersby, the magical rubber chicken. Oh, oh, hello, Feathersby. Um, well, say hello to everybody. And then, I see, I see you brought your friend, the dinosaur. Yes, you, you have him in a wagon, that's so neat. Oh, you're trying to invent a way where you can both ride in the wagon or that you could pull him, mm, but it's not working and you're starting to feel frustrated. I understand. I've totally been there. It sounds feathers be like maybe you need to be reflective and think about what is and isn't working in your design because, well, the mindset of the week is be reflective and we're also reading a book called The Most Magnificent Thing and it's by Ashley Spires and it's all about a little girl who learns to be reflective and think about what is and isn't working in her design. But she does get a little frustrated first. Have you ever felt frustrated? Me too. Well, let's get started reading the book and see what happens and maybe we'll learn something feathers be that will help you with your design. This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all kinds of things together. They race, they eat, they explore, they relax. She makes things, he unmakes things. One day, the girl has a wonderful idea. She is going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look. She knows just how it will work. All she has to do is make it and she makes things all the time. Easy peasy. First, she hires an assistant. Next, they gather they, their supplies. They set up somewhere out of the way and get to work. The girl tinkers and hammers and measures while her assistant pounces and growls and chews. When she is finished, she steps back to admire her work. She walks around one side. Her assistant examines the other side. It doesn't look right. Her assistant picks it up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They're shocked to discover that the thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kinda sorta okay. It is all wrong. The girl tosses it aside and gives it another go. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles. Her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she is finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with his paw. The thing is still wrong. She decides to try again. The girl saws and glues and adjusts. She stands and examines and stares. She twists and tweaks and fastens. She fixes and straightens studies. Sounds like she's being reflective. She tries all different ways to make it better. She makes it square, she makes it round, she gives it legs, she adds antenna. She makes it fuzzy, she makes it long, short, rough, smooth, big, small. One even smells of stinky cheese, but none of them are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers, but they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing she has in her mind. She gets mad. The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into shapes. She jams parts together. She pummels the little bits in. Her hands feel too big to work and her brain is too full of all the not right things. If only the thing would just work. Crunch. Ouch. The pain starts in her finger. It rushes up to her brain and she explodes. It is not her finest moment. I'm no good at this. I quit. Her assistant suggests a walk. It's not much help at first, but before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mad gets pushed out of her head. 
As they stroll along, she comes across the first wrong thing she made. The bad feelings are about to start all over again. Then she notices something surprising. There's some parts of the wrong things that are really quite right. The bolts on one, the shape of another, the wheel to seat ratio of the next. There are all sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the thing magnificent. She gets to work. She works carefully and slowly, tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, painting. Her assistant makes sure there are no distractions. This thing is perfect to ward off bears. This will stop the leak. This one's all wet. The afternoon fades into evening. Finally, she finishes. She alerts her assistant. The pair take a good long look. It leans a little to the left, and it's a bit heavier than expected. The color could use a bit of work, too. But it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. They are not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. The end. Well, what do you think, Feathersby? Did you get any ideas about how to redesign your contraption? Yeah, I really liked how she lined up all of the things that she had tried, and then she was able to see the good things that she'd already designed and add them into her final design. Have you thought about the things that you've tried that have worked and things that haven't worked? Okay, well, we're gonna sit down and see if we can figure out how to make Feathers Bee's design work. But I'm sure that you have something that you've been working on at home that maybe isn't going the way you want it to. Maybe you need to be a little bit reflective about thinking about what is and isn't working. So, we'll see you later. But remember, stay reflective and be innovative. Bye.